common task for a video editor is to play with time, to be able to time remap in some way a clip so that it can go faster or slower or you can have a freeze frame or go backwards, all kinds of different bits and pieces. And Premiere Pro is loaded with tools to be able to do that. We've already looked in previous ones at the rake stretch tool where you can go to a clip and when you select a clip and go over the end of the clip you can click and drag to make a clip go an awful lot quicker or pull it out to make it go an awful lot slower. Control Z a couple of times to do that. So you've seen that before and that's the standard tool and that's very good for making clips fit into gaps so that you don't add any more footage. You're not trimming in or trimming out footage. You're taking what is there and you're making it longer or shorter to fit into the appropriate gap. That's great for the rate stretch tool but there are a couple of other very powerful tools in Premiere Pro which can be used to change the speed and duration and even the direction if you like playing backwards or forwards of a clip. The first one in this tutorial is the speed duration option and that can be applied both in the project panel and in the timeline. And I'm just going to demonstrate the options that you've got. So in the project panel if I were to right click on the clip that I want to work on I'm going to get this option that says speed duration. Click on speed duration and a dialog box comes up. Now I just want you to come over here and see this is the clip it's 53 seconds and 20 frames you can see it's 53 seconds and 20 frames however notice in my timeline that I'm actually only using 13 seconds and 6 frames okay so if I'm only using 13 seconds and 6 frames I probably want to do the work in the timeline and not in the project panel however I can change the duration of the whole clip for instance I can simply click reverse speed and the clip will play completely backwards or alternatively I can say I want it to play at 50% in other words half speed and you can see it's doubled its length or I can play it at twice the speed so 200% and it's half the length but even that isn't as short as the clip length I've actually got in my timeline so I'm going to take that back to 100 the other option we have over here is maintain audio pitch now when you change a clip's length using the speed duration options the audio is going to stay attached at trying to stay at the same length as the actual clip. However, that inevitably has an effect on the pitch of the audio. If you make something go twice as fast, it's going to want to make the audio go very high pitch to keep up with it. If you go very slow, it's going to want it to make it go very slow and low pitched. So you can say, OK, try and maintain audio pitch. Now, this is not always going to work. If you're making small changes, it's going to sound probably OK. But if you're making fairly large changes, it's just going to sound metallic or robotized and not really realistic. So if you're working with large speed changes, I think you have to work on the basis that you're going to have to provide some kind of different audio underneath, have some music underneath, have some ambient noise underneath. You don't really want to be working too much with dialogue. However, you're going to see in this particular clip, we've actually got some explosions going on. So we can actually see how those explosions sound when we do a bit of time remapping. So I'm going to click cancel because I don't want to do it in the project panel. I actually want to do it in the timeline. When I right click in the timeline you'll notice I've got one other option. So I'm going to go to speed duration which is here. And when you get to speed duration the only other option I have is this one here which says ripple edit shifting training clips. What that means is if you have a clip that's already in your timeline with lots of clips going on afterwards that don't have that here but if I had another clip afterwards that would be the same thing and say I want to slow the clip down that means I would be stretching this clip out now if the other clips don't move I can't achieve that work but if I've got ripple edit shifting training clips clicked then any clips further down the timeline will all ripple edit down to accommodate the change in speed likewise if I make it a lot quicker they'll shift up so that I don't end up with any gaps so that's kind of a no-brainer have that checked if you're doing it in your timeline unless you intend to create a gap of some sort okay so let's have a little look at the clip and then let's do a few bits and pieces so I'll click OK and this is a courtesy of Adobe this particular clip so I'm gonna hit play okay and through goes our guy so obviously the first thing that we can do is we can right click on the clip, we can go to speed duration and we can simply do reverse speed, click OK and he's just simply going to run backwards. My computer's not very powerful so it needs to render it first and then he runs backwards.
and as you can hear the audio is still synchronized to what's going on so I'm going to right click and go to speed duration take that to full speed and now I'm going to take it to 50% so it's going to be playing a lot slower and click OK and then I'm going to hit the home key to get to the beginning of my timeline hit the space bar it'll render it first and then play it out I'm just going to play it straight off Now with this particular example, that's sounding OK, it can cope with the low noise. Let's right click and go speed duration, and this time let's take it to 200% and have a listen. And come back to the beginning, hit the home key, and hit play. So you can hear what I'm talking about at the audio pitch. This time let's right click, go to speed duration, and try and maintain audio pitch, and see what it sounds like, see if it's robotized it and how it gets on needs to render first. I don't have a very powerful graphics card in this computer. That's not worked out too badly for this particular approach. So it all depends what your clip's doing and what you want to achieve. This particular speed duration effect, I'm going to take it back to 100%, is great when you want to affect the whole clip together. But let's face it, when you look at this guy running and jumping, wouldn't it be brilliant if we could take him to, to say, just about to jump? And then we could perhaps freeze frame or have him really go into great slow motion as he goes over the jump until he lands and then rushes off. So we want to play with time in a very different way to the way that we've been doing with clip speed and duration. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look at time remapping, which is an advanced effect. It was actually brought in way back in CS3 which is an advanced effect which allows us to change time going into a slow motion, going into reverse, freezing frame, moving forwards and backwards in lots of different ways throughout the timeline. The only disadvantage of that one is that audio will not come along for the ride. It will stay linked and it will stay at its original length. So you really do need to think about what audio you're going to put underneath. See you in the next tutorial.